Oh my gosh, you guys, I am beyond. Like, I am just so happy for you. I am just elated at your failure. Has anyone ever gotten that before? Like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that that didn't work out or I'm so excited that the thing you were trying to get to, you're not gonna make it or that door was closed or you got stopped at that point when you wanted to go further. D does anybody ever say congrats to that? Probably not, all right? Probably not, but I saw this image on Instagram and it said congrats on your failure and it hit me because I was like that's really weird but at the same time low-key I love it because isn't it when we feel like things are just not working out when you come up on a breakthrough a lot of people have different analogies and uh, what are they called when you rename something with the letters and it equals something else like failure or fail has been you know put in all these different kind of I don't know what there's a word it's like a pseudonym I think or something somebody who's good at grammar put it down below but um, people try to um, give the word fail and failure a positive connotation because at the end of the day I think we have to look at what failure means to us as an individual obviously failure means loss Failure means to not get what you want or failure means to not reach a goal, whatever that is. It's always this like lack of not getting to where you thought you were going to be, right? But as failure is inevitable, literally there's, you're not going to win at everything in life and you're not supposed to because I remember a time where I was in grad school and actually let's even go back before then because I started getting tons and tons of no's in college uh, when I was graduating and it was getting to that point where I was applying to different graduate programs and I was getting told no everywhere every application that I was turning in I was getting told no I was putting being put on wait lists for different programs and even when I finally got on a somewhat like this is your first semester and we will reevaluate your participation in the program after that if you like meet these requirements. Even when I got that, three weeks before the semester starts, I lose my financial aid and I don't get to go. So I get put in this position where I literally am like, I didn't have a plan B. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I thought I was gonna go to this program. I thought this was gonna be what I was supposed to do. And I just remember being told no so much, even down to like my graduation getting pushed back. I kept, like to me in college, being a senior, being super involved on campus and like a student leader, you know, I was that girl, okay? I was like presidents of stuff and I was in a sorority and all that. Um, and I had this so, like such a big, kind of idea and ego about who I was as a person. And I, I started getting like these doors shut in my face, whether it was like internships or programs that I was wanting to get accepted to or whatever. And I just kept being told no and I just couldn't understand why at that time. So even when my graduation got pushed back, I didn't really see that as something to turn into a positive. I just kind of accepted it and was like, this sucks, but whatever, I'm just gonna have to like deal with it. So whenever my financial aid fell through, I was like, oh, okay, so what am I supposed to do now? I didn't expect this. And so I kind of just like, figured out things like I moved with a boyfriend to another state, tried to make my relationship my focus, thought that my failure from not, you know, being able to go to grad school meant that I was supposed to just be this person for him and that school wasn't for me anymore. I really thought that that failure meant that I wasn't supposed to do what I was doing. And sometimes when we are faced with those kind of situations, we don't realize that sometimes it's just timing because at that time, and the program that I was supposed to go to 
was not where I was supposed to be. I was not, the school that I wanted to go to was in DC. I was not supposed to be in DC at that time. Looking back at those years, a lot of personal growth happened for me. A lot of things happened to me um, that wouldn't have happened if I was in DC. So being able to like have that, that foresight or hindsight, hindsight because <laughs> it's behind right having the hindsight now it's it's i can see why things worked out the way that they worked out but that was one of the things it was like failure right and then when i was in that state with that boyfriend the the relationship failed so then i was like oh my gosh everything is literally crumbling every aspect of what i saw as my self-worth because i did see that relationship as almost self-validation that I was worth something. It had a lot to do with my self-confidence. Who I was in college had a lot to do with my self-confidence. And I never realized how much I put on those things that I did or was a part of. What I made those things amount to my own confidence. And so when literally things started being stripped away from me, the relationship that I had been in for years and the school you know aspirations that I had were not happening at least not then and I was with a degree but I did not have any sort of um any sort of trajectory or path when it came to the degree that I had because the degree that I got was super general and something that I just chose when I was in college because I knew it was going to be easy and I wanted to really focus on all the extracurriculars that I was doing in school so when I got to that point of all right no school no man no job literally I had to move back home I was sleeping on my sister's couch if any of you have watched I have a video where I go really deep into this time period of my life because it was such a low point it was probably the lowest I've ever been as like an adult uh, I'm young still so you know we know that this ain't gonna be the first nor the last time I'll go through okay but I talk a lot about like how I got through it and all that stuff but uh, you know, when I was in that point, I started focusing on just like little things that I could give myself something because I realized that when you took away all my accolades, I didn't even know who I was. I didn't even know what I liked that wasn't geared towards me trying to get to something else. You know, like I was doing a lot of things and saying a lot of things and focusing on a lot of things that were just to get me to some place instead of actually enjoying and choosing to fill my life with things that I liked and that made me happy and that made me feel alive. And so I look back at that time and I'm just like, I'm so happy for the failure. I'm so happy for the failure because not only did it hit me then, I think I kind of started really getting it when I eventually got into a grad program um, in Texas and I loved it. It made, all the struggle made me appreciate being in the program that I was so much more. When I was in a classroom, I was like, lit up because I just remembered what it felt like when I didn't have anything like when I didn't have anywhere to go I didn't have anybody to talk to I didn't have anything to put my energy towards and so when I got back into my program uh, I was so excited not only was was I able to be in an educational environment again which I really thrive in I also was able to get, you know, funding to pay for my rent, okay, for two years. And I was able to have the time to focus on my studies. Y'all, I wasn't balling, okay? I wasn't out here stunting on the gram or anything at that point. But it gave me just enough to say, this is the bare minimum, okay? This is going to be how you live if you don't do more with your life. And so... I already had a strong work ethic prior to this point in my life, but this was the point where I went into overdrive. I was, you know, going to school full time in my grad program. I was working on campus as a graduate assistant. I was 
posting and creating content for lipstick and curls. I was traveling and hosting events. I was literally living like three or four different lives at the same time. Like when one person could only handle maybe one or two things, I was doing like four or five things. And it was just a lot, but it pushed me to really look at my life and myself and what I wanted to make a priority. And so then once I got to the point where my graduate program was ending and this was the time that I was supposed to be, you know, you know, um, interviewing for jobs and figuring out what I'm going to do because my platform here online as Lipstick and Curls was growing exponentially and that, you know, I had just finished this master's program. Like, wasn't I supposed to do that? Like, wasn't that what I was supposed to do? So as I was trying to prepare myself for, you know, going and getting a big girl job through my, you know, grad program and that, that life, I started getting the closed doors again. I started getting the nose again. I started getting the sense of failure again because I was like, okay, I'm supposed to be going this way, right? Like my brain is telling me you did this, this, and this. You went to college, you got a master's degree, now you gotta go do this, and then this, and then this, and when you're 30, you'll do this, and then when you're 35, you'll do this, and at some point you'll have kids, and then at some point you'll get married, and then yeah, like this is the plan, right? No, no, I was being told no so many different ways through people, the, the relationships that I was in, the, the just, the things that I cared about versus what pe other people in my work um, environment cared about. It was just a lot of conflict. And I just started thinking to myself, why is this so hard? Why do I feel like hating part of your job is just a part of the deal? You know, like that's a part of life. You're supposed to not like everything, right? Which is true, right? To an extent. But it only works and, and allows you to be happy if you do like something about your job that actually fulfills you in some way. And I'm so proud of the failure because I'm so glad I did not get those internships or those jobs that I applied for, even in my master's program, because those would have been more distractions from, from what I was really supposed to be doing, which is this, like this, me being me and being paid to be me and to share my thoughts and use my voice for things that I care about to also share, you know, new beauty tips and products and things like that. That's what gives me energy. And, you know, edu I was in the education field, right? And I look at why I love education. It's because you get to touch people, you get to help people elevate themselves out of different situations or different um, places in their lives, right? And so I started realizing that I do that here. You know, there's not one way to help people. Just because I had only been exposed to the school atmosphere, that, you know, educational environment, didn't mean that I couldn't literally do the same things as I was doing in those settings in my own way, making just as much, if not more impact than I was in those settings. So I congratulate myself on the failures and I started rethinking the way that I thought about failure. And I started realizing that failure is only a come up. It is only a come up. It's never the you know, your life is over. I feel like, especially with millennials, I'm a millennial, young people, there's so much pressure on us to do this, do that, get a good job, make at least this much money every year. Like, and, and it's like, it's so many things that it's just really unrealistic to think that everyone is going to have this clear, concise path and that things are always gonna work out as planned. You know, like, no. And even when you put years and effort into something and it quote unquote fails, look at that as saving grace. Whenever that happens, it's a redirection. It is a redirection of where you're really supposed to be going. For whatever reason, you were not supposed to be there because if you were supposed to be there, you would be there, right? It's literally that simple. So it's a matter of being able to adapt and say, which is another reason why self 
awareness and understanding who you are as a person is such a huge monumental journey you have to push yourself to be on because there's no way that you're going to be able to decipher what you're supposed to do if you get redirected right like if you don't have any scent sense of centeredness you're not gonna know what to do you're gonna always rely on what other people suggest for you or what you see on tv or what you see other people in your community doing you'll never be able to really make decisions for yourself so when i was down and out broke heartbroken all that stuff i chose to start deciding okay i don't know who the hell i am all right let's not let's not play like i do you know but what can, can i do to start figuring out who i am and getting back to just me being jade and not jade the this jade the that you know let's let's start not playing this game of trying to associate our own happiness with accolades and titles and roles and all of that because there's no end point to it there really isn't so if you are going through something or just experience something where you're like i thought this was gonna be it i thought this was gonna be my thing and it's not it is a come up it is an opportunity for you to reevaluate why you want to do the things you think you want to do and where God is really trying to push you and how to maneuver through your life moving forward with a more malleable way of thinking. Not just thinking that I have this set of skills I learned in this setting and it only fits here. No, figure out what your transferable skills are, all right? Your transferable skills, the skills that you have, strengths that you have in one setting that could easily be switched around to fit over here. That's how you really get smart about how you maneuver through business, how you maneuver through life because my job now didn't exist five years ago or 10 years ago. So what are people doing now in this space? Like, did we all just start magically understanding how to work on social media? Did we all just randomly have the same Eureka idea to like market things online? No, none of this is new, right? It's just a new way of doing it. It's a new way of getting input out there, getting content out there to you guys, to people. Uh, to me, I'm still a consumer. I'm still somebody who consumes content online. So it's like, don't feel like just because you learned a set of skills in one setting that you can't transfer those things over to a new new experience. It, it, that's, just, that's just simple, right? Like we're complex beings. We have the creativity and the ability to literally do anything we want. It's just a matter of not being constrained by what you think that looks like, right? It matters that you look at your life and you look at the world with a very open, open and flexible state of mind because you can't even imagine the things that God has planned for you. You just can't, right? But you have to trust and not try to dictate and plan everything first. You have to be able to accept your circumstances and do the best you can with them. So congrats on your failure because that is a redirection. That means that things are changing and things are moving in your life. And it's an opportunity for you to take that failure and turn it into something amazing. So go out there, be great y'all, and I will see you in my next video.